What is the process for someone trying to become a teacher out in Thailand? Well, uh, you know, Thailand has a huge void uh, for native English speaking teachers. Okay. So the acronym is NES, Native English Speaker. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of teachers here from the Philippines, and I've worked with them, and they're great people. Uh, and great teachers. But they're not native. But they're not native yeah. English. They went all the way through university and got mm -hmm. their degree in their native tongue. The only English class they had was English class. Oh. All the other subjects, history, geometry, everything was in their native language. So they may have a master's degree in English. It's but not you the give same. me a high school graduate yeah. from the United States of America who's been speaking English mm -hmm. since three years old. Yeah. His fluency is much, much better. Right. And his pronunciation, right? Mm -hmm. So. There's a lot of uh, discretion for native English speakers. So you don't need a degree in education, for sure, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm a teacher as an English second language teacher. I'm not qualified to teach chemistry here, mm -hmm. or math. <laughs> My background was not in education. Now I have a degree, but it's in business management. It has oh, nothing same, to do. Same as me, right? business management, right. yeah. But you don't even need a degree. What you need is a high school diploma, if you're a native English speaker, mm -hmm. and you need to get certified through a TEFL program. TEFL, oh, T-E-F-L, is Teach English Foreign Language. Oh, so that's so, mandatory to teach English in Thailand? It's mandatory. Okay, how, mandatory. Much, how much is that? Uh, they're, they're affordable, uh, depending on what program you go to. Chiang Mai University's got a big program up there. Bangkok's got a lot of them. You can find them online, actually. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter where you get the certificate that says you're certified to teach English as a foreign language. What matters is that you have you it. You have it, okay. Now, if you obtain that outside of Thailand, because there's a lot of uh, TEFL courses in America and everywhere else mm -hmm. that you can train to be an English second teacher before you leave your home country. Any document that re uh, involves education outside of Thailand, when you get to Thailand, you need to go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Bangkok, so all they handle is foreign affairs, oh, right? Okay. Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You go there and you get your educational documents certified. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a high school diploma, a TEFL certificate, a bachelor's degree, an associate's degree, whatever you got, if it came from abroad, go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They'll verify that it's you, that it's your document. Mm -hmm. They have a way, it's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, so they're connected with all the embassies and everything, right? So they certify, they stamp it. Now, everything in your CV and your resume, as far as your educational qualifications to teach, is verified. Oh. So when you apply for a job and you want to go get a work permit and a B visa, a business visa, mm -hmm. which the schools help you do all of that, you provide very little. They do most of all the legwork and the paperwork to employ you, to get you on board, right? But you've already got your documents ready to go. Oh, now, okay. if you don't have a degree, certify your diploma, your high school diploma. Get it certified that mm. you're a high school graduate. Your grades matter. Oh. You've got good scores in English. That matters. They like Common Core. So your generation and people that are familiar with the Common Core education system in America and Canada, they like that here. They like mm. Common Core standards. Very popular. The American language curriculum is very popular here. More so than the Cambridge English curriculum. Oh. That used to be the go-to here in Thailand, but now it's more and more the American curriculum. So I would just recommend that people don't listen to people that say, you gotta have a degree, you gotta do this, and you gotta do that, or you can't become a teacher, because I know from my experience, people that have came here with a high school diploma, took a TEFL course, and I think they paid around $400, 400 US dollars for their TEFL. For the TEFL. Yeah. I got mine because I actually have subordinates that work for me that are mm -hmm. TEFL trainers. Oh, okay. Like they're actually instructors of the TEFL course mm -hmm. and they're subordinates of mine. And so we was able to do mine on a rapid process and oh. uh, it didn't cost me anything. That's nice. So. Uh, what can someone, what's kind of a range uh, salary that someone can expect to make out in Thailand. Okay, well here's the big difference. The, the We're talking about the Filipinos and there's people from all other non-native English speaking countries that are teaching English here, mm -hmm. okay? So their salary is always going to be lower. So the acronym would be NNES, oh. non-native English speaker, okay. okay? So the Filipino teachers and stuff, they usually make around 15,000 baht a month. 500 US dollars. Maybe 20,000 max. 20,000 bucks, so okay. that's uh, about 600, 600 five yeah. to $600 a month, which doesn't sound like much, but if they have a, 
uh, another pension or private or equities or whatever, if it's a supplemental, mm -hmm. and we already talked about the cost of living, five or six hundred dollars a month is a decent little. Salary. And that might be a lot more than they could make in their home country. Yes, right. that's why a lot of the Filipinos mm -hmm. are here because they can't make that salary right. in their home country. Certainly can't make it as an English. It actually teacher. might be double or triple what they could make in their Absolutely. home country. Yeah. Absolutely, and there's yeah. many of them here. But if you're a native English speaker, mm -hmm. any else, then the salaries go up. Uh, now, if you've got a degree in education, if you're a teacher back in your home country, the sky's the limit here. We have international private schools. Okay? That's where the big money is at. That's big money. Yeah. All those teachers are teachers. Mm -hmm. Their background, their degrees are in education, whether it's K through 12 or just elementary education, whatever mm -hmm. it is, right? So those, because those international private schools are very high tuitions. You're talking mm -hmm. about the affluent Thai parents, right. Sydney, and all of the subjects are in English. So history, math, every, it's not just an English language school. It's, it's an English school. It's an English yeah, school. Yeah. It's a private, uh, you know, junior high, high school, and they even have the elementary mm -hmm. and private international schools. And right, right. So those are the top salaries, and they can, they can make seventy to 80000 baht per month. Which is two, two to three thousand dollars a month. If you're an actual teacher. Yeah. Right? And then on the lower end, maybe thirty thousand baht. I made about thirty-five thousand baht in my last job, which I'm not currently teaching. Mm -hmm. And I was working for the Royal Thai Army Academy, which is like America's West Point. Oh. But I only taught twelve hours a week. And oh. even the regular government high school jobs usually about twenty hours a week. So the twelve hours is that like like every day? No, I would teach Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, four hours a day. Oh, so you were only working three days a week. Three days a week. So actually, you were making really good money for only working such a short amount of hours. 35,000 baht is pretty good. And then, of course, insurance, health insurance mm -hmm. through the Royal Thai Army. So I had the same insurance as the Royal Thai Army commissioned officers, have a military ID name tag, right? Mm -hmm. So that gets me into a lot of exclusive Thai-only accessible places, oh, uh. right? Because you either have to work for the government or have a family member that works for the government. If you're a foreigner, it doesn't matter if you're from China or Japan or yeah. Australia. If you're a foreigner, there are certain areas that are exclusively for Thai, mm -hmm. certain beaches and certain things. But that the military ID is really one of the best fringe benefits of having that job. And of course, being a veteran of the army myself, mm -hmm. I was really excited about getting the job. I was teaching high school up in Isan and got a call, a friend of a friend uh, in Bangkok, who's a retired Marine uh, Vietnam vet, said, hey, I've heard about a job at the academy. Would you like to go down? And so went down, did a mock class, did an interview, offered me the 35,000 baht a month. 12 hours a week. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so yeah. that's probably at the highest pinnacle for a guy that doesn't have a degree in education, but I had experience. I'd been certified through TEFL. Mm -hmm. I'd had two years at the high school, and my thing at the high school was conversational English class. Mm -hmm. In Thai language, you would say Suntana, Suntana, which just means conversation. Conversational. So we didn't have any textbooks in my class. So that was kind of my my formal training into the public school system in Thailand. Oh. Not necessarily, I mean, I would assist with textbooks and I would correct grammars, and I, but the, the need, like most of the Thai students, they can write beautiful English, probably better handwriting than you. Probably better grammar than us do. Yeah. <laughs> so reading and writing skills are really good. Yeah. But then you say, can you read that out loud for me? <gasps> I was scared. Oh, may I, I and, cannot. And one thing I noticed too is um, people who haven't learned from a native English speaker, they won't understand what was it called, like idioms? Like, oh, yeah. that guy has a chip on his shoulder, yes. right? They'll say, oh, he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder, right? right? Like, they, they won't understand what the that backstabber? is. Backstabber? Yeah, backstabber. Yeah, they think somebody really getting stabbed in the back. Right, right. right. Like, idioms are very important to incorporate into a speaking class after you've kind of went through, uh, you know, personality, introduction, because mm -hmm. you want to teach native Thai people how to communicate with foreigner. Right. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. So what's a foreigner going to ask a Thai? What's They're your gonna, name? What's your name? How Where are you are from? You? What's your hobbies? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about your culture? Can you tell me about your history? They want to know about Thailand because most of us don't. Right, right. It's a very exotic, faraway country. That's right? why I think our channels are getting popular because uh, people like to see what's going on in other countries. Absolutely, yeah. especially during the time of crisis that yeah. we've been through with this global situation and Thailand's done a fantastic job. But I would just encourage, and I know this is getting a little long, so you may end up having to cut in two, two vlogs, but yeah. anybody that's desirous of being an English teacher and doesn't have any experience in education, if you've worked with children, if you've been a coach, a mentor, a volunteer at the school district, if you've been on a school board, 
I have four daughters and I was a youth sports coach for 14 years. I worked with my third daughter that had a speech impediment. Mm -hmm. So I volunteered at the school to help with the speech impediment class. So I put all of that on my resume. Oh. I wasn't formal wasn't formal mm -hmm. teacher as a profession, but you are teaching, right? Mm -hmm. When you're working with children, even being a father from day one, you're a teacher, right? right? You have to teach your children. And then if you're doing it in a group setting, you're teaching sports, you're teaching discipline, you're teaching structure, you're teaching teamwork, right? So anything you have in your background of working with students, and then there's other jobs that involve education with adults here in Thailand. There's a lot of big corporations that want their staff to have English conversation skills. Right. So there's a lot of opportunities here. Mm -hmm. And I would just encourage everyone to, you know, contact schools directly. There's a great website called teachingthailand.com. And I don't get anything from them, but uh, it's schools that advertise direct on that website. You can search any province in the kingdom. If you know a particular province that you know someone and that's the area that you're going to, Contact those schools directly. Ask them what the qualifications are. Tell them you're a native English speaker, or if you're a non-native, say I'm a mm. non-native, what do I need? And they will assist you. And I, there's a huge void, always has been. Thailand is one of the lowest English fluencies in all of Southeast Asia. Oh, I, it's I like didn't know about that. about 20%. Oh. So it's, it's one of the lower, but see, Thailand's never been colonized. Mm. It's the only Southeast Asian country that was never colonized by the British, the French, or the Portuguese, right? So you gotta think there was never another ruler oh, with another besides language. Besides Thailand, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a reason, right? And uh, so now after this global situation, when international travel is allowed again, there's gonna be even a huge, a larger void in need for native English speakers especially. Oh. So I would just encourage everybody to, if you have a desire to do it, it's a great supplemental income. I think it's safe to say that even if you don't have a degree at all, mm -hmm. when you have a diploma and a certific certification through a TEFL program, a thousand dollars a month? That's pretty good. I think it could be expected. Right. And so if you have something already, like me, I had a social security pension. Mm -hmm. And see, the thing about it, if you have a marriage visa or a B visa, then you're not prohibited from employment. So you can get a, a work permit legally through the Ministry of Labor. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're on a retirement visa and it actually says retirement on your visa, then you're prohibited from employment. Oh, you can't work at all? You can't work Even at all. Even part-time? No, oh, not, not legally. Oh. Because you have to go through the Ministry of Labor, yeah. a separate in entity from immigration. That's good to, to know then. So if you get a retirement visa, you can't even work part-time? No, so no. That's now good, you can do volunteer work and yeah. you know non-salary stuff. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah, to make that supplemental income. So what you can do if, you, if, you're, if you're here on a tourist visa, if you actually have a tourist visa, you can change the status from tourist to be business, business, business visa, visa. Okay. in country. You don't have to leave. Mm -hmm. So if you come on a tourist visa and you got 90 days and you've already contacted some schools and then you talk to the, the foreign language director is going to be fluent in English mm -hmm. at every school. So right. that's a person you're going to deal with. There's going to be a director of the foreign language department. So you deal with them after you've sent emails and contact. Go meet with them. They're going to they're going to take care of all your B visa application, your Ministry of Labor work permit application, right? Mm -hmm. And you can change from a tourist visa to a B visa without leaving the country. Oh wow! But now if you come here with just your passport and you get what we call the exempt visa exempt stamp, means you mm -hmm. get a free 30 days. Americans don't need a visa right. before they for, run. for 30 days. But you you can't then go to work. Right. You have to have some kind of a long stay visa to get mm -hmm. a, 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 a job. work permit. Yeah, oh, okay. to get a work 